Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Adair with the Next Step Agency. I'm here to help you manage your Square POS or your inventory or whatever stresses you out today. Um, for this video, we are going to go over a little bit of inventory management and how to begin using and tracking your inventory. So to begin with, if you're on your home screen, you're going to click the hamburger on the left side. Um, you're going to go to items. You can also go to inventory management, but it's already up on your items and you are going to go here to this little drop down. When you do this, you're going to have a couple different options. And the one thing that we're looking for is purchase orders. Purchase orders are things that we have that are coming in the future, whether you've purchased them at market or online. This is a great way to make sure that what you have bought is what shows up and it's what shows up at the price that you paid for it. And you're able to track things like shipping and other discounts. So let's begin. You are going to click on purchase order. And if you have not done a purchase order yet, you will see uh, this screen will have no purchase orders yet. Uh, you can decide uh, which purchase orders you want to see. If you have multiple locations, you can, cons you can select what one you are looking for. Um, you can, this is going to be what it looks like if you have no purchase orders. Um, say that we want to just see the pending ones, you are going to be able to select these. But for all extents and purposes, we're planning on creating a brand new one. So we are going to create, you can import, you're going to do this through a CSV file. Um, to be very honest, when you create your items, it's going to be easier when you import to not import. It's going to be better to just click create. When I've utilized it through FAIR, it tends to create all new items. Um, so if you have a white t-shirt and it comes in four sizes, you are going to have four separate items for those t-shirts and that's not what you want. So we're going to create. Our first thing that we're going to do is you're going to select a vendor. If you have not set up your vendors yet, uh, this is still a great place to do that. And we will start by adding in, we'll put the vendor. Um, since this is a new vendor, you're going to hit enter or click create new. This is going to bring up a lot of information and you don't necessarily need to add this all in. It is a nice way to track some of this, um, especially if you have a contact and an email and a phone number for them and your account number. If you tend to reorder or you're planning on reordering a lot of these items multiple times, uh, it will be able to send a message at a certain point to your contact and or reorder these items. Uh, ship to, this is just a nice space so that way you know where it's coming. For some people, they have a brick and mortar and they have a warehouse. Um, or for me, I just have my brick and mortar. Expect set expected date. Um, you can do this one of two ways. Most of our distributors have a window. So a lot of times I will put expected on slash like the buy date. So the very latest I'm expecting to get this. So for today, we're just going to use September 30th in the notes. This is a good time maybe to say, did you purchase this at market? Did you purchase this um, with a specific rep? Um, add any notes in here. A lot of times I will put in here if I have, so say I, they're saying they're going to ship it to me from September 1st through the 30th or through the 20th, here we go, through the 30th. That way I know it could come in any time in between there. It's also maybe a great idea if you use a specific card, if, um, if this is COD, however you're planning on paying for that, maybe to pop that in those notes, it just is going to be good for future reference. Next thing you're going to do is we're going to end up putting in an item name or a SKU. Uh, for some things, you'll be able to put in a SKU and if it's something you're reordering, it will populate. But let's say that we don't have any of the items in here yet, so we're going to go just from bare basics. So we're going to do a yellow t-shirt. Now, as you see, I don't have any of those yellow t-shirts that I've currently purchased before, so I can cre click create new item. When I do that, it's going to bring up a really shortened version. The one thing that you want to be really careful on is this is not going to allow you to add options. So as long as maybe it's just a candle, a 16 ounce candle, this is great. But if you're going to do it with an item like a shirt or something that comes in other options or other 
sizing, you are going to want to go up to your right and where it says view all item properties, and you're going to want to select that. This is going to bring you to this screen. And if you watched my tutorial earlier today, um, or you've seen it before, this is how you create a new item. Um, I'm not going to re go back over all of this. Please reference that one. Um, and you will be able to fill all this in. So we're just going to click save. Oh, it's not going to let me click save. It wants me to finish it. So we'll put, oh, it let me in there. Okay. So always fun when it does this. So say this was just one shirt that I had ordered in one size. Um, if this was going to be in multiple sizes, I will show you an example. Uh, the unit cost, this is going to be where you want to put if you spent $10 on this shirt. How many? I had ordered two. And if you have any notes, a lot of times in the notes, this is where I'll put if there's an item number or if I'm naming it something different than what the vendor names it. Maybe this is the wherever. T. It doesn't like that. Um, and that is what uh, one of the brands that I carry calls it. I can put that here. The nice thing is if you're not the same person that's um, checking it in, you're going to put that here. There's also a space for the vendor code. And that's going to be nice if your vendor always has a code for a style that you can utilize that there. So we'll do another one and I will show you how it populates and we'll use the orange t-shirt that I had created. So if you're going to use something that you've already created before, this is what's going to do. It's going to bring up anything that might coincide with what you've typed in. I did say orange t-shirt. So um, say you're going to click and it's going to make a new one for each orange t-shirt. It's going to give me how many I already have in stock. And then it's going to, I'm going to tell them how many I ordered and you're going to enter those there. Uh, all right. The next thing you're going to do once you have all these in, um, is you are going to make sure this beautiful total matches the total on your PO. Reason being, you want to make sure when you get your stuff in that it is aligning. If it doesn't, that's a great time to be able to say, Hey, this isn't matching up. This is the pricing I had. And you can adjust that there. Um, add tax. If you are a retailer, you should not be paying sales tax on things that you are reselling. So um, you really shouldn't have to have tax unless there's another reason um, within your state. In Nebraska, we don't. If you aren't ready and say you get caught in the middle of something, a customer comes in, you can totally save as draft. This is a new option they put in. Didn't used to be that way. Um, you didn't used to be able to edit these. So sometimes you might just need to save draft. I'm not done or I'm done and I can create my PO. This is great if you'd like to email your order to somebody, if you have somebody else that you'd like to have a copy of this, if you need to save it as a PDF or a CSV, uh, if you need to import it somewhere else uh, just for your record, if it's something you want to put in QuickBooks or however you want to um, take care of that. Sometimes even if it's just to your rep that you're wanting to shoot to them, like, hey, here's the PO I put in. Can you make sure it aligns? Uh, and you can click done. And then we'll look at all of our purchase orders. As you can see right here is where it says the purchase order we put in. Now there's a couple options you have from here. If you go over to your three dots on the right, it's got details. You can duplicate. You can send it as an email. You can save as a PDF. You can save it as a CSV and you can cancel the order. If you cancel the order, this is not deleted. The nice thing about that is um, there's been times I've had to cancel orders. As you can see, I have one down here. Um, you can cancel it, but you'll still have a record of it. So if it shows up, um, you'll be able to access it there. I would also recommend opening that up, making a note. So if it does show up, you can say, hey, I emailed and canceled this at this time. So we're actually going to say we received this. So you're going to click on that order. Here is where you can do a couple different things. Maybe you need to edit the order. They've told you that they've changed the count on something, or you just want to add items to this order. You can edit that here. You have your three dots. These are the same options you had on your other side. You can print your labels. Uh, most people have the best luck if you want to print your labels is to print um, and download those as a PDF and pen, print those with your uh, label maker. Your Dymo 450 tends to be the one that I use. That works the best. 
So once you have your uh, PO in hand that has came with all of your beautiful items, you are going to come over here. If you've already checked everything in, everything looks great and you can just receive all. That's You can click receive all and it will bring all those in. If there's a receive note that you need to have on there, you click receive note. Maybe it's gonna open. It's not gonna open. Uh, that's a new one, so they must be having coding issues. Uh, so we're gonna just receive these. Here is one that you can put damage on delivery or will not be fulfilled. If you have something that's came and it smells really bad, damage on delivery, and then it will take it off of this and it will hold it for the next time. If you've received everything fine, you just click receive, how many you've received and save. We'll say on this one, it, this was damaged on delivery, it was two of them, and it's going to take it off of this one. Um, you could create a new PO with the outstanding items just to kind of keep track. I would add a note as to how it was damaged. You can also undo that and then receive. Down at the bottom, you'll see where you can add tax. Again, if you are tax exempt, you're going to want to make sure that they're not charging you sales tax. Uh, fee, this is a great place to add in your shipping, your handling, um, anything that maybe they're charging you for. And then you can also add this too. The nice thing is for tracking during your accounting season, you're going to want to know what your margins are. So if they had $10 in shipping, a lot of times they will give you free shipping if you have so much. So we'll say we received them all. You're going to hit save. And now you've received all your items. You can also click back in here and say, I wanted to now print my labels. The nice thing about this is you can select your labels. You're going to be able to select what you want on your label. It will take this, it will monitor the size of it. You don't want to have too much on your busy label. Um, here is your items that were on that purchase order. You're going to want to double check those because sometimes if there's something you removed, this is just taking what was on that purchase order. It's not taking into consideration if there was anything that was deleted or not deleted, but like you didn't receive. It's going to just print all of them. What you're going to do is you're going to go over here to the right. You're going to click create label. And now it says your labels are ready to print. If you are in Safari, I will tell you it doesn't work well to print from this screen. If you are using Google Chrome, this is a fantastic option rather than having to download your labels. For me, I'm in Safari, so I would go download PDF and it will open up a new window and I will be able to print those off. Then after you're done, you just exit out and you are done. If you have any more questions about utilizing your purchase orders um, or if there is something that you need to dwell down on or dig into, please let me know at adairreeseagency.com, A-D-A-I-R-R-E-E-S-E agency.com or adairreeseagency at gmail. We will talk to you guys soon. Let me know if you have any more questions.